Hello and welcome to Tribe Topper. In this video session, you are going to learn about reflection and refraction. So what do we mean by reflection? This is simply the bouncing back of a wave from an obstacle. That is called reflection. Like you throw a ball on the wall, it just bounces back. That is reflection. So here you can see there is an incident ray which falls on the mirror. It has to be an opaque obstacle from where it will bounce back because if it is transparent, it will pass on to the other side. So you can rather say the phenomenon of bouncing back of a wave from an opaque obstacle. So that would uh, cause reflection. Now this incident ray gets reflected onto the other side. This is reflected ray then you should know that a line which is drawn perpendicular to the mirror, this straight line, this is called the normal. So it is important to understand that what is the angle of incidence? It is the angle which the incident ray makes with the normal, that is angle of incidence. And the angle which the reflected ray makes with the normal, that is called angle of reflection. So do not uh, I mis misunderstand that you sometimes make you know children make mistake they mark this as the angle of incidence this is not the angle of incidence with the mirror it is always with the normal so these are the angle of incidence and angle of reflection and there is a very important law of reflection which we often use in many of the problems also so you should know that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection that means if whatever angle of incidence is there that is if it is 30 degrees then the angle of reflection would also be 30 degrees and what if the ray falls along the normal now just see if the incident ray falls along the normal then the angle of incidence is zero, right? So if an incident ray falls along the normal, the angle of incidence is zero because the angle of incidence has to be with the normal. It's already falling along the normal, so angle of incidence is zero and so is your angle of reflection. That means the ray would just retrace the path back. So this is all you need to know about reflection and the next thing that we talk about is now refraction so what do we mean by refraction so when a wave it travels from one medium to another medium where both the mediums they have different densities like air is one medium and a ray travels into water or glass that's another transparent medium that what then what happens the ray it bends down now as you can see here that the ray is bending down here when it's entering this is the incident ray this theta 1 it's the angle of incidence and theta 2 this is the angle of refraction the ray that is bent here that is the refracted ray so how can we define refraction it's the phenomenon of bending of a wave when it travels from one medium to another medium right that is called refraction and what is the cause of refraction the cause is simply that the speed of a wave is different in different media right because if it is traveling in the air it might travel it is always traveling fastest and when it enters it into say glass or water or oil the speed of the wave differs so speed of a wave differs in different media and that is what causes the refraction because what happens here in a denser medium when we are talking like a ray enters from air to glass in a denser medium the wave slows down so when it slows down it obviously bends towards the normal if i would just extend this path beyond now what what was going to happen on the other end when the ray has to go out from here it is again going to speed up so that means in a lighter medium your ray has to or any wave whether it's a water wave or a light wave or a sound wave it will speed up so in a lighter medium the wave speeds up so how should the ray travel from here it will again go away from the normal so that means when a ray of light it enters from 
lighter to denser medium it bends towards the normal and when it goes uh, back into the lighter medium it is going to bend away from the normal so just from the bending of the rays you can make out whether that particular medium is lighter or denser as, as compared to the other medium there is an important law related to refraction also we have Snell's law this law says that the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is constant so we are saying if we have sine of angle of incidence that is sine i and its ratio with sine of angle of refraction sine r this ratio remains constant and we call that constant as the refractive index we denote it as n this constant is called the refractive index of the medium now what do we mean by the refractive index actually this is a mathematical relationship that sine i by sine r is equal to n but what does refractive index actually mean so bending ability of a medium that is what refractive index indicates that means if a medium is has high refractive index it is going to bend the ray more if it is a less refractive index it is going to bend the ray less and if we have a denser medium that means its refractive index is going to be high right so n is high and if it is a lighter medium then the refractive index is going to be smaller right so that means if we know out of the two media like here this is one medium and the ray is traveling here whichever medium has the higher refractive index according to that you will decide where the wave is going to travel faster like so here if it is uh, refractive index is 1.1 and this is refractive index 1.5 so you would know the ray is going to bend slow down and when it is going to travel outside again to that 1.1 it is going to speed up and going to go away from the normal another relationship of the refractive index is with the velocity of the wave so we can also find out the refractive index of a medium as the ratio of the speed of light in the first medium to the speed of light in the second medium so i'll rather write it here as one n2 and how do we pronounce this 1 and 2 we say 1 n2 represents the refractive index of the second medium refractive index of medium 2 with respect to medium 1 because when the ray travels from the first medium to the second medium the bending happens in the second medium and since the bending happens in the second medium we should get the refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium so 1 and 2 is written as c1 by c2 that means c1 is the velocity of the wave in medium 1 and c2 is the velocity of the wave in the medium 2 so you can write 1 and 2 as uh, c1 by c2 or you also have it as sin i by sin r so when the ray travels from the second medium back to the first medium so that is going to give you 2 n1 that means you will get the refractive index of the first medium now with respect to the second so that would give you the ratio as c2 by c1 so this clearly indicates that 1 n2 is equal to 1 over 2 n1 they are inversely related to each other so if you go from the medium so one two should you shouldn't confuse it with as like which is the first and which is the second so suppose the air, air a ray is going from air to glass then you will get the refractive index of glass with respect to air so that will be the velocity of light in the air over velocity of light in the glass and when it is going back from glass to the air you will get gna that is the refractive index of air with respect to glass so that will be cg upon ca and as you can see this implies that a and g is equal to 1 upon g and a that means if you know the refractive index of glass with respect to air you can easily find out the refractive index of air with respect to glass by simply finding the reciprocal 
So let's solve a problem based on the angle of refraction and angle of incidence related to the refractive index. So calculate the angle of refraction when the angle of incidence at a glass surface is 55 degrees and the refractive index of the glass is 1.48. So we are given N here which is 1.48 and we are given the angle of incidence that is 55 degrees. So we just did that the ratio according to the Snell's law sin i by sin r this ratio is equal to the refractive index n. So first of all we'll write the formula and now plug in the values. So we get sin 55 upon sin r is equal to 1.48 Therefore, sine of r is equal to sine 55 upon 1.48. Solving this, you get 0 0.553. And therefore, what is r? That is going to be sine inverse of 0 0.553. So you just press sine inverse of 0 0.553 on the calculator and you get 34 degrees. So that is how you can find the angle of refraction. So that's all in this video session. In the next video session, you're going to learn about critical angle and total internal reflection. Thank you.